All right, I've just finished hacking together, I guess. I mean, there's the parts required, lots of that stuff. Um, as the title states, my coolant glow plug manual override and telemetry circuit. So the manual override part is the fact that the coolant glow plugs, which I've disconnected right now for testing, um, they're controlled by the ECU normally, and I think the ECU has been programmed way too conservatively. I'd like to be able to turn them on manually. So I've got three 30 amp relays, got them powered straight off the battery, three uh, 30 amp fuses just for safety, and the relays change over from the factory wiring, called changeover relays. They, um, they will normally route the factory wiring to the glow plugs, to those blue wires there, to the, glow to the coolant glow plugs. Remember they heat the coolant. If you don't know about that, you need to look up uh, ALH, Manual Transmission Coolant Glow Plugs, and learn more about that. If you're just joining us, I'm not sure why you've joined us, but come along for the ride. So when I hit the changeover relays, when I power them up, I will get, here's my telemetry circuit, I will get lights on on all three. Now these lights will also come on if the ECU turns them on um, to let me know if one, two, or three of them are lit as per the programming when these relays are not active. But when they're active, juice comes straight from the battery, straight to the glow plugs, and also lights those lights so that I know what's going on. Um, there was one extra thing. You only want to run those, gl those glow plugs when coolant is flowing, because otherwise you're just boiling coolant in that one little spot and wasting electricity. So there's a trigger wire here coming off of the um, fuel shutoff solenoid. It should be the, called the fuel solenoid because what it does is, um, I hope what it does is right, that um, when you apply 12 volts to it, it uh, allows fuel to flow which means the ECU can control my whole circuit, the manual override, and only allow my circuit to be active when uh, fuel should be flowing and the engine should be running. So, that brings us to the inside of here. Mm. There's a couple uh, LEDs there, a couple switches. So this is my arming switch, which does nothing right now because the fuel solenoid is not powered. Here's my other arming switch. This is the arming switch for the whole car. See my other video for that. There's the Thrustmaster shifter. So if I turn that on, try to get it all in one shot, way up near my face. Aha! Lights! See, so fuel solenoid is got 12 volts. Oh, why did that shut off again? Oh, that shut off because I didn't put the key in. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's cool. All right, jeez, give me, get a key. I gotta get a key. Jeez, get a video without a key. Where is it? There it is. Bring it. Okay, key would be helpful. <laughs> that is so cool. That is the first new feature. What unexpected features. Okay, so I'm going to shut the, the whole thing off again. Put the key in so the immobilizer will be happier this time. Now, when I turn it back on, get it all in one shot, get it all in one shot. Light comes on. Should stay on because the immobilizer is not going to be shutting off my fuel, right? Sorry about the glare from the light on the camera. Huh? Shut off again. That's weird. Well... What happens if I try to start it? Ah, it comes, allows fuel again when starting. Okay, great. So, that's cool. So that's how the fuel, I didn't know the fuel shut off solenoid did that. Okay, so now this is a latching circuit. I can latch her up, boom, and that in theory, let's see, eight degrees on there, nine degrees, all right, 
That, in theory, just turned on all three of those. Yep, those are lit, so I better plug them in. This is going to be the first real test here. One, two, three. Put my hand there to see if I'm getting some heat. Oh, it feels warm. Feels, oh, it feels nice and warm. I like it. Oh, I can feel the heat right there. And that, that's more heat than the engine should be putting out right away. I mean, yeah, it's cold over here. And it's right there. Right there, that's cool. Right here, that's, oh, I can barely keep my hand on there. I love it. Love it. I like it when I can barely keep my hand on there. Look at that, 15, 16. Look at her climb. Better open the other garage doors so I don't fumigate myself. 17, keep climbing. Climb. 18. I've never seen it climb this fast while idling. 19, never. Well, maybe. I actually haven't watched it that close. So this may all be one of those uh, seat of the pants things. Or what do they call that? Uh, no, what's the, uh, I'm sure f there's a Freudian whatever name for when you uh, do something and then you expect a result so you get more of a result than you really are getting because your vision is clouded and deluded by delusions. That's climbing pretty good. And uh, my, my hand still kind of, I can still kind of feel where it was hot. So, um, yeah. I think that's working. That's still lit. Now, the nice thing is that when I shut her down over here, both those lights will go off. The system will no longer be armed because fuel has been cut off, right? So that automatically shuts off the coolant glow plug override. Perfect. And then when you turn the system back on, that one first light blinks because it's armed. You can start it up. And the coolant glow plug override will not come on until I click the button and latch the relay that's just in beside the, behind the dashboard there. That's the latching circuit that is the key to this successful operation and making sure coolant glow plugs don't keep running when the engine's off. So just 